Magic TV, my name's Craig, it's nine o'clock, which means it's time for another video. And today I'm gonna to talk about spectators being made the star of the performance. There's been quite a few people that have asked on the channel recently on various different uh, Q and A's and so on and so forth. What tricks are there that you can perform to an audience that takes a spectator and makes them the star of the show? I'm not just talking about giving them a souvenir that they're gonna keep forever, like Cuban bottle or something like that, or a signed card or anniversary waltz. I'm talking about making it look like they are the person doing the magic, making them be the star. So I thought that's a really good question. So what I've done is I've had a long think about it and I am prepared here today, this list, and this is a list of what I think are the 10 best routines that you can perform to an audience if you want to take somebody and make them the star of the show. Now that could be, um, uh, for example, uh, because it's a, a special event and they're the VIP, uh, whatever the reason. This is what you do. These are the 10 tricks that you can do to make the spectator the star of the show. So without further ado, let's have a look at the 10 best tricks that you can perform if you want your spectator to be the star and they are gonna do all the magic. So in 10th position, you have Out of This World by Paul Curry. Now, everybody knows Out of This World. It is a trick that has been around since time began. Uh, if you don't know what Out of This World is, what rock have you been living under? The whole idea is from an apparently shuffled deck of cards, the spectator deals the cards into two piles and they separate the reds from the blacks. Now, there are so many different ways of doing this. Uh, my personal favourite way of doing it at the moment is Out of This Zip Code by Eric Tate, uh, which is, in my opinion, great because part of the problem with Out of This World is it's a bit too laborious and procedural. If you're going through an entire deck uh, without the zip code, they're actually only doing it with about 20 cards. So it's, an, it's, a, it's a lot quicker, it's a lot more direct. But to be honest, any handling will work as long as you understand that you give the spectator... The, the, the whole thing about making a spectator the star, I should add at this point, by the way, you can pretty much make any trick into a trick where the spectator becomes the star. So for example, with Ambitious Card, you can give them the deck and you can get them to snap my fingers or whatever and turn the card over and the card comes to the top and it can make it look like they're the star. But in reality, a lot of the times when you do a trick and you try to engineer it so the spectator becomes the star, the audience will realize that it's kind of you, right? The audience will realize it's you that's done it and, and, and you're just making it look like somebody else has. With the tricks that are on this list, as long as you present them correctly, the audience will have no clue that you had anything to do with it. And the perfect example is Out of This World, because as long as you pick the right version of Out of This World, it's completely hands-off. They're the one that takes the deck. They're the one that shuffles the deck. They're the one that deals through the cards. And even though they deal through the cards, every single card ends up separated, the red cards and the black cards. It is the perfect example of making the spectator the star of the show. So there you go, in 10th position, we have Paul Curry's Out of This World. In ninth position, in ninth position, we have Silk to Egg, that's Silk, S-I-L-K, Numerical 2, Egg, by Cody Fisher. Now, you can get this directly from Cody's website. I believe it is one of the only places that you can get it. And it is basically Cody's handling of Silk to Egg. And you know what? I've been doing this for a very long time. I've never talked about it on this channel before. Um, I'm now giving away my closely guarded secret. For some reason, nobody knows about this trick. And I don't know why, because it is the absolute best version of Silk to Egg that I've ever seen. It's not even that hard to do. So what is Silk to Egg by Cody Fisher? Well, it's an extension of the, the Silk to Egg plot. If you don't know Silk to Egg, the whole idea is that you take a, uh, a handkerchief, push it into your hand, and uh, it turns into an egg. You then show that it's a special egg that's been hollowed out and you show that you've got a handkerchief. You do it again, you push the handkerchief into the egg um, and, uh, and, and obviously it turns into an egg, but then this time you peel 
uh, where, the, you know, where the hole is that the, the handkerchief is meant to be inside, you peel that off and you show it's a real egg. Where Cody's version differs is it's kind of a do as I do routine. So the spectators up on stage with you, they're following along with you and they're doing the whole routine with you. And with very clever handling, Cody engineers it so that they do the trick themselves. They expose that it's a gimmick egg. They do everything. And at the end, both you and the spectator crack your eggs and show that they're real eggs. And the beautiful thing is the audience is going to think that they've done the magic, but they will have absolutely no clue how they actually did what they did. And that's the beautiful thing behind uh, Cody's version. It's the only version I've seen where you can have the spectator do the final moment of magic as well as you. And it's beautiful because I love it when you're making the spectator the star and they have no idea how they've done it. Uh, it's another example of out of this world. You know, out of this world, they're going to separate the reds and the backs. They don't know how they're going to do it, but they are. It's the same with this. They're doing silk to egg and they have no idea how they're doing it. It's a, a beautiful routine. And if you perform on stage or you do parlor or you do stage or cabaret or even kid shows, this is something that you should check out because it's flown under people's radar. It's a very old trick, but it is the best version of Silk to Egg I've ever seen. In eighth position, we have Limelight by Mark Elsden. Now, you can actually get this as part of a download bundle uh, called Elsden with a three, E-L, three, S-D-O-N. Uh, and that was put out by Vanishing Ink. And what Limelight is, is it's really the sort of trick that you would do in an informal situation. It's not something that you would do at a gig, really, uh, because it takes so long. It's not something that you do in a stage routine. But if you're with friends in a social situation, this is something that will absolutely destroy an audience. And it's one of Mark's best tricks that he's ever created, in my humble opinion. Now, what Limelight is, is you take the spectator... To one side so you've got a group of people you take the spectator to one side and you kind of give them some instructions for a couple of seconds you come back and uh, you then get them to do the trick and it always works and they end up predicting cards they end up finding people's cards they end up cutting to cards they end up doing all this crazy stuff and they have no idea how they're doing it and it's confusing the hell out of the audience because every single after every single phase you take them to one side and say right okay let's do this now and you, you kind of give them some instructions and when they come back they can do this trick absolutely perfectly and it becomes more and more baffling as it goes on it is the ultimate perfect example of making the spectator the star because that's the whole premise behind the trick you take somebody to one side you teach them the trick they come back and they become the star of the performance the beautiful thing is even though you're giving them these instructions they have no idea how they're doing it and yet they are as i say it's not the sort of thing you'd want to do in a, in a walk around gig because you've got to keep taking people off to one side it's quite long um, but right time, right place. This is an absolute miracle worker. Okay, in seventh position, I'm going to uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the concept of um, instant stooging, which I didn't know whether to put this on the list or not. But as I do it so much in a real world situation, uh, I wanted to include it. And and that's that. If you don't know what instant stooging is, it's taking somebody and kind of the bringing them in on the trick during the course of the trick and they have um you know and not actually having them stooged ahead of time so it's not like you found somebody and said hey you're going to help me with this trick let me tell you how during the course of a routine you're 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 bringing them in on the trick now this is a little bit different to everything else on this list because they are going to know how this is done because you're secretly queuing them information but you pick the right person they will never tell anyone. They will never tell anybody um, that how it worked because it's it's the perfect example of making them the star. And what I like to do is I like to do this kind of impromptu. This is kind of a jazzy thing for me. So um, it's something that I I might do. I might not. It very much depends on the audience. A lot of the time, if I'm at a corporate event or a military ball or something like this, and I've got an alpha male that I'm performing for uh, that wants to be the center of attention, I'll do this to get them on side and make them look like the superstar and they won't tell anyone how it's done. And it's the whole idea of, for example, having somebody uh, 
uh, Pika card. So you have them do a peek and you, you catch a break, pass that card to the top of the deck, and then you just palm that card off. Uh, I've got a deck of cards over here. Is this a regular deck? Might be a regular deck. Is it a regular deck? Yes, it is. So it's kind of the example of, you know, you might do a spectator peek. So you say lift up somewhere, peek at a card. They peek at a card and then, you know, you're casually shuffling it or passing it or something. Uh, and, and the cards control to the top of the deck. And then you say to somebody else, right, you're going to read his mind. Can you do me a favor? Can you hold on to this deck for me? Um, to hold on to the deck. And, and, and you're handing this deck to the person that you had look at a card and obviously they can see the card that's palmed in your hand and you say what I want you to do is I want you to look right here and I'll point at the hand I'll say I want you to look right here and you're going to tell him what the card is okay and you go, and then I just give them the deck and they hold on to the deck and you say it's not the three of hearts at the bottom is it no concentrate on the card first of all tell him the, the value of the card okay it's a six tell him the suit it's a three tell him that you know whatever it may be right time, right place, they'll be like, no, I've got some incredible reactions from that. And the beautiful thing is you can repeat it as long as your audience management is good. So the person who you're wanting to uh, stooge, so on. So, for example, they're going to be they're going to be there. You're going to have the rest of the audience here. You can do this over and over again, just using exactly the same technique. And you go right now, this person's thinking of a card. OK, and you're going to try and work out what that person's card is. Can you hold the deck for me? Concentrate on the card go for it you do this the right like i say you do this to the right person in the right time it kills it absolutely kills um and yes you're bringing somebody in on the act but as long as you are aware of who you're performing for and you pick the right person um one you're going to get that person on side because they're going to be aware that you're making them look like the superstar and b they'll never tell anyone Okay, number six, I'm going to talk about empowerment uh, by myself. Now, this is a trick that I put out on Flipped Out, which was my very first DVD. And it was a routine uh, with a flipper coin and three regular coins. Now, Flipped Out has not been available for a long time. Uh, a few months ago, I did film a uh, kind of a reboot for uh, Flipped Out, which is called Reflip. That's going to be coming out at some point down the line and uh, we updated all the different routines and everything um most recently i lectured on empowerment at the magic circle when i actually did my lecture there they got a standing ovation and this is one of the standouts of the lecture so what is empowerment it's the whole idea of doing a coins across but the spectator actually vanishes the coins and makes them appear either in your hand or in a spectator's hand. But the key thing is the spectator does the vanishes. So the whole premise behind it is, hey, there's this thing called coins across. You've probably heard of it. The idea is coins jump from one place to another. I'm going to have you do this. There's four techniques you're going to need to learn. And, uh, and I'm going to teach you all four techniques and you're going to do it yourself. And then the whole idea is that you apparently teach them these techniques in front of everybody and they are making the coins vanish themselves. They feel the coins go, they see them go, and each time the coin lands in your hand or into a spectator's hand. The beautiful thing about this is it is so visual. You are nowhere near the spectator when the vanishes are taking place. And it really gets an amazing reaction because, yeah, if you can do a coins across, that's one thing. But the spectators are obviously going to be aware. The audience is going to be aware that you've got sleight of hand ability. You've got skills as a magician. But you have them do the vanish of each coin so that all four coins vanish while they're holding on to them. That's an absolute killer moment right there. It's the sort of thing that people will remember for a very, very, very long time. Uh, empowerment has been one of my go-to coin routines for probably the best part of 18, 19 years now, something ridiculous like that. It's just such a powerhouse workhorse for me. And again, it's the perfect example of making that person the star. A lot of the time when I'm doing like a wedding, I will have the groom do this or I'll have the best man do this uh, and just really make them the star. And they have no idea how it's being done. So yeah, empowerment um, you can't get flipped out anymore, and it was shot very badly, to be honest, when it came out in the first place. But, um, as I say, if you're, if you're a member of the Magic Circle, you can go check out the lecture. That'll be in the archives. If not, it's coming out soon on Flipped Out, so uh, on Reflipped, which is going to be the project title, I believe. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's an amazing way 
of making coins jump from your hand into the spectator's hand or from the spectator's hand into your hand or the spectator's hand into another spectator's hand without you doing anything. Okay, in fifth place, I'm going to talk about Shuffling Lesson by Chad Long. Now, I picked out Shuffling Lesson because this is one of my favourite versions of the plot. But to be honest, any spectator cuts the aces is a, is, is a perfect example of this. Uh, where the spectator apparently cuts the deck four times. And each time they cut, uh, they manage to cut to an ace. Until in the end, they've cut to all four aces, right? Uh, there's lots of different versions of this. Shuffling Lesson by Chad Long is one of my favourites. If you don't know Shuffling Lesson, you can get it as a download from Penguin for like about nine bucks. It's going to be the less, one of the best downloads you'll ever buy. Um, it's, it's, the whole idea is that you give the spectators a shuffling lesson. So they're shuffling the cards and you're teaching them how to shuffle. You're teaching them how to deal. And even they do all the shuffling and they do all the dealing, they're able to find out the four aces and they're able to find out the four kings from a deck of cards that they've shuffled and they've dealt. It's incredible because, again, it follows the same premise that we've been talking about throughout all of this, which is the spectators are doing the magic and they have no idea how it's being done. Um, which and, and, you know, there's, when you think about card magic, the ability to produce a four of a kind is something that you kind of expect. And so having a spectator take a deck of cards and, and, and be able to produce two four of a kinds is a really cool moment. But the premise works as well, because it's not just a case of, hey, you're going to do this yourself. It's more of a case of, well, you're going to do this yourself and I'm going to teach you how to do it. I'm going to teach you how to shuffle. So yeah, Shuffling Lesson by Chad Long is really good. In fourth place, we've got Four Minutes of Fame by Michael Amar. Now, this is available on library.com as a downloadable ebook. Um, Four Minutes of Fame is a lesser known Michael Amar routine that is really, really good. And what it is basically is it's a way of doing cups and balls, but it feels like the spectator is doing all of the work for you. It feels like the spectators are doing the vanishes. It feels like the spectators are making the, the balls jump all over the place. It feels like the spectators are doing the final loads. They are doing the trick and you're just a spectator. You're just part of the audience while they're doing this amazing trick. In reality, the routining and the structure of the routine very cleverly takes the focus off you and puts it on the spectator. And any audience that watches this is genuinely led to believe that they've performed the oldest trick in magic. Um, I, for some reason, I don't know why this hasn't caught on. I don't see many people doing it. I don't even think that many people are aware of it, but it is um, just a really cool premise. And it's one of the best cups and balls routines there are out there. So there you go. It's called Four Minutes of Fame. It's, uh, it's by Michael Amar, and you can get it from library.com. That's library with a Y, right? And uh, yeah, it's a really, really, really strong piece of magic that really does make the spectator look like they're the star of the show. Okay, in third place, we have Empowerment again. But this is very, very different to the Empowerment I talked about earlier. This isn't my coin routine from Flipped Out. This is Empowerment from More Banding Around by Russell Leeds. Now, the history behind this is myself and Russell were business partners until he left and uh, kind of uh, went into the property world. And um, when we were business partners, obviously, we worked on a lot of magic together. And I created the Empowerment routine and he was exceptional at rubber band magic. And he used to come up with so many different ideas with rubber bands. And uh, he took the premise of empowerment with coins and he applied it to rubber bands and, and just kept the, uh, kept the same name in homage to uh, my original routine. So what empowerment is, is it's the whole concept of having three rubber bands, which the spectators can, shuff, uh, can examine. And you take the three rubber bands and one at a time, the spectator vanishes the rubber bands. Uh, and it's really strong because it feels like you don't do anything. It feels like they're doing absolutely everything. And each it's a little bit like the empowerment routine with coins in that you're teaching them three techniques to vanish a rubber band. 
and each technique vanishes it differently. The best vanish is on rubber band number two because they see two rubber bands, they squeeze them tightly and they can feel the two rubber bands in there and then you tell them to slightly lose pressure and they feel one of those rubber bands vanishing. It is a really, really weird moment, as Paul Harris would call it. It's an incredible moment of strange and it really is. They feel one of those rubber bands vanishing. Then you end up with them vanishing all three bands themselves. And obviously, if you want to structure the routine, you can have them bring it back using a quiver or something. But that's not really ultimately what the routine's about. Really, ultimately, what the routine's about is having them vanish the, the bands one at a time. And it is an incredibly strong way of actually doing that. Okay, and number two, the second best routine, in my opinion, to make the spectator the star is, uh, I've got it here, is Cue the Magic by Angelo Carbone. Now, I should point out that this is obviously, uh, well, I don't know if it is, but this is similar in many ways to Echo by Wayne Dobson. And for years, I performed Echo by Wayne Dobson. Echo is something that you really should look at as well, uh, because Echo follows a similar presentation but uh, Angelo's routine cue the magic goes in a completely different direction with it in terms of the methodology it is so incredibly clean uh, because the spectator can freely name any card there is no force whatsoever uh, with the original echo routine you have the, the, the whole idea of both of the routines is that you are cueing the spectator and having them perform the trick Right, that's what you're doing. In the original Echo routine, you're having, you're, and it's very funny, you should watch Wayne Dobson do it, but you're telling them what to say and they're saying it. And you're having, you're telling them to have you think of a card. And so you're kind of forcing yourself. But with Cue the Magic, you're using cue cards. So you're not telling them what to say. You've got a whole stack load of cue cards and you're pulling one from the top to the back and they're following along what's on the cue cards. And, and they're having somebody in the audience name a card. And they can name any card that they want to. And when they do, obviously, you've predicted, uh, there's been a prediction there of the card that they freely named. It's a really strong premise. It really is. But it's the perfect example of making the spectator the star of the show because they are literally doing everything. You become, a, you know, you become just part of the furniture with this. Uh, and that's the whole hook. The hook is, and how I do this, just so you know, is I normally do a routine where I have two people up on stage, like the suit jacket escape, for example. And I have these two spectators up on stage and I'll have them uh, do the trick. So I'll have, the, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be doing a trick like suit jacket escape or whatever. And at the end, I'll keep one of them on stage and I'll say, hey, you did such a great job. You're going to be the star of the show right now. You're going to help me with this next trick. You're going to be the star of the show. You're going to perform for everybody. And then I have them do that. I have them perform in front of everybody. And, uh, and and that's how I introduced the premise of, of Cue the Magic. Very, very strong trick. Very strong trick. Very funny the way they're reading out the, uh, at, at the cue cards one at a time. And an incredible moment of magic at the end when you've got, uh, when they've got the card correct. And, you know, it's, it's just, it's just really good. Um, obviously, because you're using cue cards, it's really more of a stage trick. It's more of a platform trick as opposed to a close-up trick. If you are looking for a version that you can do close-up, you might want to consider looking at Echo by Wayne Dobson. But it's the perfect example of making the spectator the star of the show. And in first place, the best trick, in my opinion, to make the spectator the star of the show is The Solution by Michael Murray. The Solution by Michael Murray is something that I perform. I've done it in kids shows. I've done it on illusion shows, cabaret shows, parlor shows, comedy clubs, close up, walk around, big tables. You name it, I've performed it. Um, what is it? What is it? Well, man, it's so good. The whole idea is that after a whole bunch of Rubik's Cube manipulation, you give somebody, you have somebody come up on stage, you give them the Rubik's Cube, you have them take the Rubik's Cube, hold it behind their back, mix it up behind the back, and they solve the Rubik's Cube behind their back without even uh, looking at it. That's basically what the premise of the solution is. 
It is incredible. It's a great way to end the Rubik's Cube routine. The problem, and I've talked about this before on the channel, the problem with Rubik's Cube routines is it's very much a case of, look, I can solve the cube. Look, I can solve the cube. Look, I can solve the cube. Well, that was that. Shall we move on, right? Whilst with this, you're doing all of that. <laughs> you know, you're doing all of the solves and all of the matches and everything. But at the end of all of the solves and all of the matches, you're then in a situation where you're going, well, you know, that was great. <laughs> But now you're going to come on stage and you're going to solve the cube yourself behind your back. And it's such a strong moment. It really is. Uh, it is, in my opinion, the absolute best way to make the spectator the star of the show. I love it. And, uh, you know, I've been performing it ever since Michael released it. Uh, and, and I, you know, if I've got a VIP in the audience, if I've got a... Um, uh, like maybe I'm doing a wedding gig and I've got a bride, I'll have them come up. They will solve the cube behind their backs. I've got no idea how they've done it. Even though there's a bit of dual reality in place, they're just as impressed with the trick as everybody else is. So it's the best type of dual reality. Um, and then I'll probably go into Cuban Bottle or something like that. So yeah, if you haven't checked out the solution, you really should. For my opinion, Learning the solution is the best reason to get into cube magic because it is the best trick that you can do to make the spectator the star. And it is so versatile. You can literally perform it in almost any performing situation. So there you go, guys. That is the 10 best tricks that you can use to make sure that your spectator, your audience member is the star of the show. Now, do me a favor. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Have you performed any of these tricks in your show? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Are there tricks that I've missed that I should have included in this? I would love to know what you think. Is there a trick that I've spoken about in this video that you now want to go out and perform yourself? Again, I would love to know. Thanks very much for watching the video. Don't forget, if you want to see more videos like this, you just got to like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. And if you haven't already done so, please go check out The Netrix. It's www.thenetrix.com. You can get immediate access to uh, uh, the platform. You can try it out and see what all the fuss is about. I will be back again soon. I'll see you again. My name's Craig from Magic TV. Mm -hmm.